shows the components that should be in a complete IoT platform. Um, the first component is basically uh, uh, con connectivity uh, and normalization. So before jumping into that, typically an IoT platform is, if we're just talking about a simple definition, is about enabling connectivity between things or devices. The architecture may also consist of a software platform, an application development platform, or an analytics platform. In a more sophisticated form, a true end-to-end -end IoT platform would typically consist of all these layers. The first would be connectivity and normalization. And this is basically the intention of this component or layer, is to bring different protocols, communication protocols, and different data formats into one software interface so that you ensure that accurate data streaming and interaction with all devices is possible. So typically, device to cloud, but also more difficult, cloud to device. The second layer that is also a uh, must-have in a complete end-to-end -end IoT platform component is device management. So the layer of device management is basically to ensure the connected things are working properly, seamlessly, running patches and updates for software applications running or the device or the edge gateway. So for example, if you have a sensor or you have any embedded device that's connected, your end-to-end -end platform should allow, this, the, 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 the platform should allow that you basically run diagnostics on your sensor, detect issues, run updates, run firmware updates. You can do any of these device management uh, activities. Um, it includes also device provisioning. So when you first plug in the device, you can provision the device, create and maintain an accurate avatar shadow object of the real device on premises. Uh, you can configure the device, so set parameters, for instance, firmwares or applications, uh, secure the system, so conf communication confidentiality, mutual authentication of the device in the back end, uh, resource access authorization. So all these part of the device management, the ability basically in your platform to manage Manage your connected devices and talk to them and do uh, uh, provisioning and configuration of these remotely connected devices. Um, database, definitely a component that everyone expects to be there and uh, knows exactly that it should be there. So it's basically a scalable storage of device data, uh, bringing not just device data, of course, but data, brings the requirement for hybrid cloud-based database to a new level in terms of data volume, variety, velocity, and veracity. So it's not only device data, as I said, but all the data that is potentially surrounding the objects. So for example, user data, application data, uh, the APIs, the open interfaces that are uh, on the cloud, for instance, to access the embedded devices, these kind of data, utilization history, device topology. So any data that is pushed as part of your device or, or as part of uh, your application space is basically hosted in this storage part of the platform in the databases that are supported in that platform. Processing and action management brings data to life with rule-based event action triggers, uh, enabling execution of smart actions based on specific sensor data. For example, um, a, a big example of that would be the if this, then that environment. You probably heard about this, where you go in and you start defining rules such as, if it rains, I don't want to turn my irrigation sensor on. If the weather is hot, uh, is cold, I don't want to turn my uh, AC on. So basically putting rules that controls your devices um, and these event uh, rules are based on events that you can automatically collect into the cloud and actions that you can automatically take from the cloud um, definitely um, analytics uh, everyone expects the IOT platform to include an analytics component um, so this performs a range of complex analysis based on the data that is stored in your platform from basic data clustering, deep machine learning, predictive analysis. The intent is basically to extract the most value out of the IoT data stream. Uh, and this is basically, it, it starts here when we're talking about such um, additions, we start talking about the application space in this IoT platform. Visualization, so the ability to basically uh, map the data that you have captured in your IoT platform um, in 
uh, visualize dashboards where data is portrayed, for example, through line stack, pie charts, 2D or even 3D models. If I want to see the temperature over the last three months of a specific place, I really don't want to see a table that is showing me the temperature reading every 10 milliseconds. I want to see a graph so that I can predict, for example, or I can map where the, the anomalies were compared to a specific other events. So visualization should be supported in the IoT platform as well. Additional tools include, for example, the ability to allow IoT developers to prototype, test, and market the IoT use case, so creating platform ecosystem apps for visualizing, managing, and controlling the connected devices. External interfaces, finally, is basically um, integrating with third-party systems and the rest of the wider IT ecosystem via built-in application programming interface, so APIs, software development kits, SDKs, and gateways. Uh, external interfaces uh, should be actually be integrated as part of the IoT platform, and a good example uh, would be, for example, again, as I said, the if this, then that, where you're basically just communicating with the devices via interfaces that can be integrated into an IoT platform. So with that said, um, I, uh, I will uh, uh, um, move to the case study and I will let Emmanuel proceed in this uh, part of the presentation. <laughs> 